Welcome back to the Lost in Transit podcast, everyone. I am your host, Spud Groshon. Now, with summer approaching fastly and all of us trying to get the fuck out of our houses and see something cool, I figured I would bring you a National Parks episode. Instead of doing a National Parks episode about the Grand Canyon and Yosemite and Yellowstone, I figured I would bring you an episode about some of the least visited national parks. Maybe drum up some interest in some places that you've never heard of before. So let's begin. First on the list is Guadalupe Mountains National Park in Texas. Just east of El Paso, it sees an annual visitor rate of about 226,000 people, which sounds pretty high, but when we get to some of the later ones, you'll see it's You'll see it is high, I guess. Now, the Guadalupe Mountains have four of the tallest mountains in Texas. And the intrepid traveler will try and hike the Guadalupe Peak Trail to get a stunning panoramic view of the park. This desert park also boasts over 80 miles of hiking trails. It is popular for its flora and its fauna. And the same mountains are shared with the park 35 miles away called the Carlsbad Caverns National Park, which is another one of the much more popular parks. Park number two. Park number two is the Congaree National Park in central South Carolina. The Congaree National Park, the largest section of old growth tree hardwood trees in the U.S. It sees annually about 160,000 visitors. The park has been awarded International Biosphere Reserve status by UNESCO. The park is notable for its canoeing and kayaking, which you can rent in Columbia, South Carolina. And there is a water trail marked with signs down the Cedar Creek that you can take your canoe and kayak down. There are also over 25 miles of hiking trails and 2.4 miles of boardwalk. Yet most of this park is swampland. Park number three is Dry Tortugas National Park, 70 miles west of Key West, Florida. It sees an annual visitor population of about 55,000 people, which being so remote, you have to take a ferry or a seaplane to get there. So it's rather difficult, but also probably really fun to get to this place. Now, Dry Tortugas is made up of a few islands. Uh, Garden Key, which is the main place the ferries take you to, that's where you can camp, and that's where Fort Jefferson is. Now, Fort Jefferson is a unfinished Civil War Fort. There is also Loggerhead Key, which if you're into snorkeling or scuba diving, there are tons of shipwrecks and coral. There is a lighthouse on this island. However, this island, unlike Garden Key, is only open till dusk and only accessible via private vessels that need to be registered at Garden Key before you go. It's about three miles from Garden Key. So if you're going to bring a kayak, make sure you're ready for that. This next park is one of my favorites, the North Cascades National Park. Now, it's about six hours from Portland. It's about three hours from Seattle. Sea's only about 31,000 visitors a year, but that is probably because in the winter time it gets housed with snow and it's almost impossible to get into. Um, it's also known as the American Alps because of the snow covered peaks. Some of the names of those peaks are, are Desolation Peak, Mount Fury, very ominous sounding names, right? Now, if you're not trying to climb a mountain and you're just trying to do a hike just outside of the park on the east is one of my favorite hikes in the world. It's called the Heather Maple Pass hike. 
It's very popular. It's pretty rough if you're not in shape, but the views are absolutely stunning and it is incredibly rewarding. It's like nine miles in a circle. I think you change elevation like 2,300 feet, but the park is mostly is mostly back country and mountaineering. The, there are a lot of glaciers in the park, but again, in order to see them, you need to get out of your vehicle and hike rather far. A popular destination in the park that is accessible to everybody is the Diablo Lake Overlook. It's a gorgeous view. It's a great place to have a picnic. It's a great place to just hang out. And the drive through the park is absolutely stunning. And the park is free, which is rather unusual for National Park. Park number five, and the last park in this episode, is Isle Royale National Park. Now, growing up in Minnesota, I never really actually realized that this park was in Michigan. I always assumed that the island was closer to Minnesota and it was part of Minnesota. But upon doing research and such, I realized, well, I'm an idiot. Um, so yeah, this is a place I've wanted to go for years. And I think my brother may have finally gone. Uh, I would have to actually check and make sure that was true. But it sees about 29,000 visitors a year. It's very slim. But that's also to say the average National Park visit lasts four hours. The average visit to Isle Royale lasts three and a half days. 99% of the island is natural wildlife, like a natural wildlife area. Um, the only way to the island is by a private boat or a ferry or a seaplane. There is, There are no roads on the island. There are tons and tons of hiking trails. You can do short or long hikes from Rock Harbor or Windigo to all over the island. It is in the middle of Lake Superior, so you can... There are water sports. You can go fishing. There are shipwrecks. You can scuba dive. It's not just an island for hiking and camping and wilderness stuff. You will... If you're lucky, see some moose on the island. As of late, the wolf population is dwindling very low. But hopefully, fingers crossed, the wolves come back to Isle Royale. Now, I know that these were just little snippets of places that you may have never heard of. That you may never hear of again. But if any of them seem to interest you... Go to www.nps.gov and do some more research. There are 59 parks in total, and these were just some of the least visited that to me still seem pretty incredible. Follow us on Instagram at Lost in Transit Podcast. Shoot me an email at lostintransitpc at gmail.com. Get lost. Get lost.